right, I'm going to show you how to uh, put great stuff foam in a tire, small tires, so that they won't go flat on you again. This is one that I did about a week ago. I still haven't cleaned it up. I made a little bit of a mess on it. Um, first of all, this adds almost no weight to the tire, and it's a nice dense foam inside. I don't know how much weight it'll take, because this is the first one I ever did. Um, you just have to try it yourself, but it, I would think it'd take quite a bit of weight, because you can see I can't really even press this in. And this tire was going flat on me all the time. It wasn't a major leak, but it constantly was going flat, and I, I couldn't keep air in it. I got tired of it, so I said, hey, I'll just put great stuff foam in there. Um, I've only done it on small tires. This is a hand truck tire that I'm using for uh, um, transport of kayaks and things like that, so it doesn't have a ton of weight on it. Um, you could probably also do it on wheelbarrows. I don't know how much weight it'll support. You just have to give it a try. Um, you could probably also do this on small mountain bike uh, tires, like for kids. I don't know that a large tire would work, but you know, if you're getting ready to sacrifice the tire anyway, what the heck, it's worth a shot. Um, you probably won't be able to put an inner tube back inside afterwards because the great stuff foam would be really hard to get back out of here because it is so sticky. Um, this one never had an inner tube in it, so it's still got the plug. If you don't have a plug in, when you take the inner tube out, your plug's going to be gone. So you'll have to put something on the inside, maybe glue or tape it on the inside so that the great stuff foam won't just come out of this hole when you put it in there. Uh, another thing, great stuff foam is really nasty stuff. Be sure to wear gloves, uh, some surgical gloves or mechanics gloves, whatever. Um, something that you can sacrifice because anything it touches is ruined. This stuff is really sticky. Um, I wouldn't bother with the latex version. The latex version is very easy to clean up, but it's not nearly as dense and hard, so it probably won't work as well. I just use the traditional great stuff foam. It expands about 50%, so you only need to put about 50% in there, and then it'll swell up to fill the rest of the void. Um, but it doesn't hurt to put extra. I don't think it can produce enough pressure to actually blow the tire up. Um, be sure and put down some cardboard, because it's going to come out around the sides, as you can see how this one did. Um, you can put tape or oil around the sides of the tire to keep that great stuff foam off of it so it won't be such a mess to clean up. I'm going to try that this time. Um, I don't know that I really recommend putting oil because if you get oil between the bead and the rim and you're using it on something like a bicycle tire, the rear bicycle tire, when you uh, go to take off it's probably going to spin the tire on the rim so uh, that wouldn't work very good. dismount one side of the tire. Um, I just went ahead and dismounted the inside. That way if I make a mess it's not as noticeable. Not that it's a big deal for what I'm doing here, but what the heck, it just won't be as noticeable. Um, be sure to remove the inner tube and plug the hole. And Great Stuff Foam cures by moisture. So you want to add a little water into here. Now you only need a small amount of water. Just put a little bit of water inside the tire and then you shake it around kind of violently so it gets all around the inside of the tire. Then turn the tire over and try to shake as much as you can out. You only need a small amount in there. You're probably only going to leave in maybe a teaspoon or two. You know, but, but that will help it set up good. If, if you don't put that moisture in there, once the bead sets up, moisture can no longer get inside and your great stuff foam isn't going to set up then. I guess if for some reason it doesn't set up, you could always uh, take a needle and inject some water through the, through the tire or something like that if you had to. Be sure to shake the foam good. If you read the directions on it, it says to shake it for 30 seconds or so. I've already shaken this quite a bit, so I'm not going to shake it a whole lot. Then uh, you can get somebody to help you press the tire down. I don't have anybody to help me, so I'm just using some of these clamps. You don't have to do this, but it'll probably be a lot easier this way. And then uh, I'm going to you know, shoot some up inside of here on each side, and then I'll take a clamp off and work my way around and, and just keep working my way around the tire. Um, but if you don't do this and you put the foam in, when you go to press down on another section of tire, sometimes it will force the foam out on the other side of the tire. So that's why I'm doing this.
Uh, like I said, you only need about 50%, but I put a little bit more than that. Alright, this is the point of no return, so be sure you shake your great stuff up good. Make sure you got your tire set up. If you're doing more than one tire, be sure and have it ready because great stuff doesn't allow you to stop for 10 minutes to go get another tire ready. You have to do them all one after another. This stuff really gets sticky quick and starts to swell up quick. So be sure and have your gloves on, have your cardboard down, have your tire ready, anything else you think you might need. Get it there, ready to go. Already shaking this foam pretty good before, so don't need to shake it a whole lot more. Alright, here we go. Wish me luck. Probably want to lift it up so that you're using the can more upright than anything, because if you turn it upside down, you may not get the stuff you need out of it, you might get more air. As soon as you start to see some coming out, stop there. Take your next clamp off, cut the next part of the tire loose a little bit. Spans about 50%, so you don't need to go too crazy. This can's running a little low because I've already done one tire. But it continues to expand a little at a time inside the can so you can still get some extra out of it. I think I'm still going to have plenty. I can see it starting to come out here in a few places. I'm going around, so I'm going to skip those places and go on to areas where I don't see it coming out. I'm just about out of foam. I may have not left myself enough room here or enough uh, foam since I used some in a previous tire. I may run out, but we'll see how it goes. like about all I'm gonna get out of this can. Let it sit there for a second. It expands even in the tube once you let go. So I'm gonna let it sit for a second. Now pull it out. You can see there how it's expanding really quick if you've never used it before. Alright then I'm gonna kinda give the tire a little massage here to try to get it up against the rim. Probably notice real quickly that it starts to uh, starts to seat itself back on the bead again. That's 
due to the pressure that the foam is creating inside. This time it worked out really well. I didn't use as much foam, so none even came out around the rim. If you do get some, you can uh, take a flathead screwdriver and run around the rim to clean it out about every 15 minutes or so until you notice it quits expanding. And uh, that will keep it from uh, interfering with the, the bead setting, especially if you're on a tire like a bicycle tire that you, a rear bicycle tire that you need to be able to take off with. But uh, don't, don't squeeze it very hard, whatever you do. If you squeeze it real hard at this point, and you break the bead back loose again, what's going to happen is a bunch of great stuff foam is going to come shooting out here and you uh, won't be able to get it back in there. It'll just be a big mess and you'll lose some of your pressure. But uh, I'm just barely squeezing it right now and I can tell it's, it's getting firm already. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to set it there, let it cure for a little bit, maybe 30 minutes or an hour, and then uh, I'll set it out in the sun. I'm just going to leave the tape on it. It doesn't hurt to leave the tape on until it's totally done. Then I'll set it out in the sun and let it uh, cure up for a day or so, and then I'll uh, pull it back off. You might want to set it upside down like this, since I put it in this way. You know, that way the foam will kind of come back to this side. I'm just going to set it down like this. Maybe come check on it every once in a while, but like I said, don't, don't squeeze it very hard until it's set up for a day. Can, you can tell here how much it's been swelling up. This is really sticky, nasty stuff. All right.